In just a few days, Star Wars The Acolyte will be with us on Disney+. Plus. I know everyone's excited, right? 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 Some of you? Like you in the back there? Well, anyway, they kicked off their press tour, and things couldn't be better for a galaxy far, far away. Well, Anakin just killed a whole Death Star. How many people died on that? Um, hold up. Wait a minute. Did he just say Anakin? blew up the Death Star. I, oh, okay, let's just give him the benefit of the doubt. We all make slips here and there, you know. Probably was a little nervous and was trying to provide a good answer. And instead of saying Luke, he said Anakin, right? Like he wouldn't make the same mistake twice, would he? I mean, surely Dave Filoni, somebody on set, somebody next to him, somebody, somebody with Star Wars would say, hey, look, uh, it wasn't Anakin, it was Luke, okay? It was Luke, so... Next time you're asked that question, um, just give the right answer. Hey, it's it, it happens to us all. You're all it's all good. It's all good. Uh, bring in the next group and uh, we'll try this again. I I did get in trouble for this answer <laughs> at Star Wars. Got heat. I got I got heat. Yeah. And in my mind, it's so funny to me because it literally, as a person who's outside and just a fan coming in, that was what was so beautiful and interesting to me. You know. People have been talking to me online about how Darth Vader is such a bad person. It's very clear, and it's very well established from those actions. But if you can't look and see that Anakin blowing up the Death Star possibly killed millions and millions of people, I'm going to get in trouble for saying this oh. right now. Um, you should just shut up. Okay, well, she literally told him that he should shut up. But that's okay. You know, that's besides the point. These are the actors. They're hired to play a character. They, they don't need to know everything that's going on in Star Wars and all that stuff. They, they're, they're hired for a job, so I guess we could let that slide. So what does Lucasfilm do then? They go back to the old playbook. What's, what's the old playbook, Jay? Tell me. Well, the first thing that they're going to do is they're going to go online and find any YouTuber, influencer, whoever that just really loves the direction of Disney Star Wars. They're going to they're gonna pull them out. They're going to invite them down. They're going to hang out with Dave Filoni and Leslie Headland and just have a day of it. And they're going to get a sneak peek of the Acolyte. And you know what they're going to say about it? They're going to say that it's amazing, that it's wonderful, that this is the greatest Star Wars ever, and that everyone's going to love it. There, there's not going to be a bad review in the house. I mean, that's why they're called influencers, right? So they can influence people to like something, to try something, to uh, give it a shot. Well, let me just remind everyone, there was another Star Wars property that got the same treatment. And yes, I'm talking about the Star Wars Hotel. They invited influencers and vloggers and YouTube and, and everyone that had a camera that had some sort of influence, let them stay there for free. And what did they do? They came out and they said, spend your money. You're going to love it here. Don't worry about the cost. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. Don't worry about it. And yeah, how did that work out for all of them? Uh, not too well. And how did it work out for the Star Wars Hotel? Yeah, well, it's collecting dust somewhere in the corner of a parking lot. And honestly, I wouldn't put all the blame on the influencers. But to be fair, this is standard practice, especially for Star Wars. This is the High Republic. This is something new. You know, they, they've got no uh, jangling keys for this. They've got to make this thing work. Uh, the High Republic, you ask? What is that? Oh, yeah, it's, it's a book series that takes place like a few hundred years before The Phantom Menace. You might have heard of it, right? You mean you're not reading any of the books? You're not reading the High Republic comic books? How, why, how could you not do that? Well, it looks like a lot of people aren't reading the books because the sales for these things have been horrific. And uh, it wouldn't surprise me if they just kind of like poof it out of existence because, I mean, it looks like some coloring books are selling more than High Republic books. And the other thing, too, the High Republic series is where Star Wars began to dump all their checkbox pronoun people or whatever you want to call it. They started making interesting characters for this series, like these people right here, the trans-binary Jedi twins, whatever that means. I, I don't ask me to explain it. 
but whatever. They started introducing characters as asexual and LGBTQ and th different things like that into the High Republic series. The High Republic was also praised when they introduced this children's cartoon and they had the very first LGBTQ plus, I, I can't get it all, sorry, forgive me if I missed a few alphabet letters, numbers, whatever, um, into the series. So this is where they dumped all that stuff. And now they've turned it over to none other than Leslie Headland. And she came out swinging. Star Wars The Acolyte aims to top Darth Maul's lightsaber fight. Listen, I get it. You shoot for the moon, maybe you hit a star. But uh, after the last few lightsaber duels we've seen on Disney+, Plus, this was laughable at best. And then we have this one I showed you earlier. That the Acolyte will be safe for black nerds. I didn't know that they felt unsafe in Star Wars or not represented. I, I don't know. But uh, yeah, so we came out better than Darth Maul and safe for black nerds. Well, after all that, we finally got a trailer. Close your eyes. Your eyes can deceive you. We must not trust them. This line must have been the theme for the entire show because, dear God, look at those down votes. Almost a million. People don't care about this show. They don't want this show. But Lucasfilm, you know, hey, don't trust your eyes. They're going to deceive you. We got to do some damage control. All right. It's on to the press tour. Leslie, you're up. The acolyte creator, Leslie Headland. I know how frustrating some Star Wars storytelling in the past has been. Hold on. Hold, hold on. Hey, are you throwing everything under the bus? <laughs> like, Are you like, yeah, we know it's been frustrating. Those Disney plus Star Wars shows, they, they weren't that great. You know, we, we get it. But let me just say this. Let me just say this. Um, I want to be clear. Anyone who engages in bigotry, racism, or hate speech, I don't consider a fan. Well, that there you have it, you know? So if you don't like the show, if you don't like a certain character, you're probably a bigot. If you don't like this person, um, you know, that's hate speech. If, if, if you don't come out swinging for the fences for this show then we're going to put you in one of these boxes because I'm sure we could find it somewhere. You know, we, we could find it. Oh, oh, a, a lady lesbian uh, as one of the leads. Oh, you don't like that? Okay, you're a bigot. Oh, okay, yeah. Let's just let's just not. Oh, not enough white people for you. You're probably a racist, you know, and, and I don't want to hear any of that hate speech. You're not a fan, so we are not going to judge your critique of this show because we've already put you in that category. Uh... Okay, great. Well, that uh, this is starting off great. You're really encouraging people to watch. Uh, sure, you didn't want to tell us anything about the show or anything like that. No, you just wanted to uh, point fingers. That, that's okay. All right, all right. We'll we'll put Leslie Headland. Yeah, she was associated with Harvey Weinstein. All that stuff. All right, all right. The, we we could put that in the corner. Let's bring out Kathleen Kennedy. Lucasfilm boss says women in Star Wars struggle with toxicity due to male-dominated fan base. That right, way to go. Kathleen Kennedy, you, you got ahead of it before the show's even out. You said, hey, this show will probably struggle because uh, it's, it's male-dominated. And because of males, it's toxic. Uh, yeah, you, you threw all that into one sentence, didn't we? Now we got the soundbite and the headline, and you, you just really decided to throw men under the bus here. Um, here's an idea. If you knew what your fan base is and your job is to create content to make money for your brand, then why did you not, you know, kind of make something for the fellas? You know, like why? What, what's going on here? If you knew that certain things would struggle, then why are you pushing certain things? But again, I guess this was all part of the plan. 
she has come out multiple times and said, expect more female-driven Star Wars stories. Okay, let me say this for the people in the back before I start getting weird comments. Uh, and for Kathleen Kennedy. Hey, you can have strong female leads in Star Wars. And I got something better for you. They have always been there. Always. And there never was a problem. But what we are seeing, we are seeing like we have to push this narrative and forget about storytelling, forget about what came before, just throw it in the trash. We're just going to push this. We're going to push female directors and writers and we're going to push female leads. And I don't care if anybody likes it or not. That's what we're going to push. Forget about the story. Forget about making something compelling that we will love and talk about for years to come. Forget about all that. Just put them in the forefront because that's what we're going to do. And if nobody watches it, we're just going to blame men. Um, how's that working out for you? Lucasfilm has been nothing but a disaster since, uh, you know, Disney has taken over, right? How about Indiana Jones? That's a Lucasfilm product. Lost over hundreds of millions of dollars for that. Uh, Willow got kicked off season one because you had a lesbian love story in there. Nobody wanted to see that. The Star Wars brand. Yeah, I'm seeing toys flying off the shelf for that one. Um, good job there. When you sacrifice storytelling for whatever you're trying to push, people see right through it. We're not dumb. And now here's the argument yet again. If this show fails, it's men's fault. How dare you men? How dare you? You should be ashamed of yourselves. Just hang your head in shame for making this female-centric show fail. Okay, let's recap. I'm sure all this amazing marketing is going to do wonders for the show. Let's see. Freebies for YouTubers that love Disney Star Wars. Check. We got that. We got Leslie Headland saying, if you don't like it, you're probably a ism or a bigot or whatever. Check. Kathleen Kennedy's blaming men. Check. We've got uh, stars of the show not knowing anything about Star Wars saying Anakin blew up the Death Star. Check. Okay, it's all good. It's all working right into play here. This show should be gangbusters, man. This should be the show that everyone's talking about for years to come. And look at this. The budget is more than the Kenobi series. It's around $180 million. There's only eight episodes. And each episode is 30 minutes. And it took four years to make. Four years to make a four-hour film. This story also takes place 100 years before The Phantom Menace. Well, with all this marketing and everything that's happening and the budget, all that stuff, what do you guys think? Do we got a hit on our hands? Or is this another Lucasfilm flop that's going to be somebody else's fault? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. This is Jay, and uh, we'll catch you when we catch you.